So what was our last topic? The in last class, I think uh, Linux uh, inter theory yeah. into right, yeah. right. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, we have discussed advantages of Linux, right? Correct. For advantages, we have seen. Let me show you. Let me give a quick overview. <coughs> last class. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> so many advantages are there. Out of those many, these are most important advantages. Multi-user, multi-task. Multiple users can work simultaneously. That too, they can do multiple tasks. Okay, that is how we can do it. By having multiple user accounts. Okay. How we do it? By creating multiple user accounts. Open source. <clears throat> You know that it is free, open source, free. So you need not to spend money. Security, <clears throat> in terms of two things. One is a hacker and the one is virus. You know, right? Hacker, uh, it is providing security from both hacker and virus. Hacker can attack Linux, but compared to Windows, attacks are very, very less to Linux because it's difficult to hack difficult to understand okay difficult to learn virus virus also can attack linux but that will not affect your system that also we have seen you know? and uh, <coughs> need less resources it consumes less resources because it is having only command line interface it doesn't have any graphical okay that's why it is consuming less resources and here i have given an example of uh, MP3 and MP4, you know, song difference between these two, right? <clears throat> so these are the advantages of Linux over Windows. Now, so architecture of Linux, you can see here architecture of Linux. What I'll do, I'll, I'll compare this uh, Linux with Windows, okay, so that you'll understand easily. Uh, this side I'll write uh, Windows. This side I'll write Linux. Okay, Windows and Linux. <clears throat> Total four layers. In Windows and Linux also same. Kind of same. So here in Windows, <coughs> the main central one is hardware. In Linux also same hardware. These are the layers of you know OS. Not OS, the system, you know, you can think. I'll, I'll explain, you know, let me put it in simple term. Hardware, on top of hardware, we have OS, operating system in Windows. In Linux also, same thing as OS only, but that OS in Linux we call kernel. Kernel, that's the only difference. Okay, in, <coughs> in Windows we call OS, in Linux we call kernel. That's a simple, simple difference, you know. Uh, and on top of this OS, we have shell. In Linux also, we have shell. I'll explain what is the shell all about. On top of the shell, we have user interface. Let me write user. User, okay. So hardware, <clears throat> OS or you can call kernel on top of that shell, next user. Right? So what actually happens? How they interact with each other? User interacts with shell. 
shell interacts with OS, OS interacts with hardware, and we get reply in a same and reverse order. We get reply like this. That means, let me show you. <clears throat> See, here I'm going to open my command prompt, CMD. See, I'm opening my command prompt. Okay. So what you can see, black color, whatever screen that you can see, that is what we call shell, shell. See, I'm user, whatever black color you can see, that is shell, okay? So being a user, something I'm typing here, you can see. Something I'm typing here. That means user is interacting with shell. What is shell here? The black screen, whatever you can see, that is what shell. So user is interacting with shell, correct? So when I type something here, could be any, any command. I type it something and press enter. <clears throat> when I press enter, what actually happened? The shell backend interacted with OS. OS in turn interacted with hardware and it got reply from hardware. Hardware given reply to OS. OS has given reply to the shell. Finally, shell is displaying that output to me, correct? Shelly is showing this output to me that so that I can see <coughs> that output on the screen. <coughs> Understanding, right? <coughs> so that is how actually it works. That means how OS interacts with shell, shell interacts with OS, OS interacts with hardware, will get reply in a same manner. Okay. So if you take either Windows or Lens, both are same, no difference at all. Only difference is in Windows, we call <coughs> OS. In Linux, we call kernel. In Linux also, you can use the word OS. No problem at all. Okay. So both are pretty same. No much difference. Now you might be thinking, Sai, so in Windows, we have graphical is a graphical layer. So where it comes? I'll, show, I'll tell you. <coughs> this graphical layer is, right? That comes on top of this shell. You can see. On top of this shell. So on top of shell, there is one extra layer that is what graphical layer, whatever you can see in the pink color. That is what GUI. Okay. Now what actually happens? See here, graphical layer is on top of shell actually, on top of shell. Now, <clears throat> when I see directly actually what we can do, we can directly interact with shell, the command prompt. Okay, <coughs> I can interact with command prompt. But see, since people are not familiar with commands, it's not so user friendly. That's why these Microsoft company, what they did, they have added one extra layer on top of shell that is what graphical. So your actual main core thing is shell only, command prompt only. But since that is not so user friendly, to make more user friendly, Microsoft company, they have added one graphical layer on top of shell. That means what actually happens now, when you do something on graphical layer, backend respect to command will be executed. Backend respect to command will be executed on shell. Earlier when graphical layer was not there, <coughs> we used to interact directly with the shell. But since now we have graphical layer is there, I'm interacting with graphical layer. Graphical layer is backend interacting with shell in an indirect way. If graphical layer is not there, so I can interact directly with the shell. That's all. Let me show you. See here, I have opened command prompt. Let me close it. Let me open again. See, I have opened command prompt. Where I'm now, I'm under C here. C colon users and is correct. C drive users and is. Let me take you to the same location through graphical. You can see C drive. C drive users acer correct let me keep these two side by side yeah see right side <coughs> left side both are same correct or not <coughs> you can see here right side in c drive i am under users inside acer folder correct left side also c drive users and acer drive. both are same one is graphical and the other one is cli now, 
So right side, see what I'm doing, graphical, graphical side, I'm creating one directory, okay? So you know right how to create directory, right click, new. I'm creating one directory. What is the directory name? Uh, what is today's date? 21, 21 October. One. See, 21st October 1. That's the directory I'm creating, press enter. So as and when I press enter, see, as and when I press enter, Backend <coughs> command line, <coughs> at command line, respect to command will be executed to create a directory. Actually, to create a directory, we use a command called mkdir sensor directory name. But I'm not typing directory. When I press enter graphically, <coughs> see, when I press enter, backend respect to command got executed automatically. And that directory that you can see here also. It's here, when I type dr, dr is to see the list, list of directories. Enter. Here you can see uh, the directory name you can see here somewhere. What is this? 20. What is today's date? 21. You can see 21 October 1. Correct. Did I do it manually? No. See, if if to do it manually, I can do it like this. mkdir, mkdir, 21st. October 2, you can see, I can do it. This is the actual way we have to do it. MKDR means I'm creating one directory. I'm giving directory name, see? That is so, this is the way to do it. Okay, now see when I press D, when I type, when, when I want to see the list, here you can see, <coughs> this is the one which I created through command line, directly interacted with shell. But this is the one, <coughs> that I interacted through graphical, backend graphical interacted with command name. See, to create this one, I executed command directly. But to create this one, I did not execute any command. I did through graphical, graphically. Backend graphical executed one command through at on top of command prompt. That's why this directly got created. That is so. That means the graphical layer is which is extra layer, which is actually not required for us. Not required. Just to make things easy. To make user friendly, they have added this graphical layer. But even if it is not there, still happily, you can work because here the main core comes, core thing is command line. Understood? That is so. So this graphical layer is consuming more space. That's the reason it is consuming more space. Okay. Without graphical, also happily you can work. Understood? So that is the difference between graphical and shell. In Linux, <coughs> there. <are coughs> There. <coughs> in Linux, they are not giving any graphical layer. <coughs> they are not giving any graphical layer. We have only command line is here. If you add graphical, that will become like a window only. But generally, we don't do it. We do it everything through command line. Understanding, right? That's the <coughs> difference. <coughs> that same thing that you can see here. Okay. Now coming to next concept. <coughs> 